Good day. We are the group Janssen. We will now be presenting our commodity system analysis for the commodity of milk fish for the course ABME 103. Now for our members, we have Almila Arellano, Jasper Dane D. G. De La Cueva, Meredith B. Galog, and me personally, Miguel Carlos Francisco Perino. Now we'll first start the presentation with the overview of the commodity, milkfish, to be presented by a member of our group, Maredith Gador. The presentation will rotate within this commodity system analysis framework, which we will discuss the key points of each subsystem, wherein we aim to identify the investment and development entry points of the milkfish that will serve as a guide for future purposes. Milkfish, with the scientific name of Chanus Chanus, is commercially cultivated in the Philippines and other Southeast Asian countries for food consumption. It is widely known for its soft pink flesh, mild flavor, numerous small bones, and good source of protein. It belongs to monotypic gonorino shiforms family, and also it is first found in Indian and Pacific Ocean. These are the top three producing country of milkfish. Third in rank is the country of Taiwan. Second is the Philippines. And the first one is the country of Indonesia. Combining the first and second country, it makes up the 95% of the total milkfish production in the world. Milkfish industry in the Philippines. The fact that the Philippines is surrounded by water the milkfish production boom in the country, making it a former rank one and currently rank two country in milkfish production. And also with 281,727 hectares of area of production as of 2002. The milkfish industry plays a huge role in social economic of the country. Given that there is a thousand milkfish farms that operates from small scale to large corporation giving thousands of jobs. Aside from that, milkfish industry also helps to address the food security within the country. History of milkfish in the Philippines. Raising milkfish started back 4th to 16th century, solely dependent on restocking funds from different wild shore waters that leads to different varieties of species and amounts. With this setup, problem arise, which is having unreliable and unpredictable variation. And because of that, later on in 1970, large funding was made in terms of infrastructure, research, and etc. Then it was followed by the establishment of Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center, or CEPDEC, in Ilo, Ilo Philippines uh, in 1973. In the mid 1970s up to present, the government and other fisheries institutions give their full support to, in order to strengthen milkfish industry in the Philippines. Now I'll be presenting for the input sector. The materials that would be considered as the major input for rearing milkfish would primarily be the fry and also the peas that will be provided for the fingerling up until the sexually mature phase. In earlier times, milkfish breeders were heavily dependent on wild fry in order to stock their bread funds and a large portion of the fry were caught in the coast coastal area. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquaculture Resources so, well, then discouraged this practice among the fisher folk and also the breeders since it posted a great risk to the top totality of the available wild milkfish in the Philippine waters. With enough research and development, the Philippines, with the help of the organizations such as CIFDEC, Worldfish, FAO, and BIFAR, the Philippines, along with Indonesia, Thailand, and Mal 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 Malaysia and Taiwan, are now obtaining a significant amount of their fry from hatcheries. Next slide, please. Now, for the sources of input, with the Philippines being currently a global leader in the production and marketing of milkfish in the fisher sector, 
The country is able to produce its own materials for the interest sector while strategically importing milkfish fry from other leaders in the milkfish farming, such as Southeast Asian countries like Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, in circumstances wherein there is a shortage in supply. Next slide. I'll be presenting for the production sector. Over the years, production of milkfish has been unstable and unpredictable. Despite that, Philippines is still one of the top producers of milkfish globally, with approximately 400,000 metric tons of produce from 2012 to 2016. Next. Last year, Milkfish was the largest contributor in aquaculture production with 36.4% of the total, making it a top species and number one commodity in the country's aquatic resources. Next. For the farming systems, milkfish, which produces fry, can be obtained by either collecting in a natural environment or be produced in captivity. Milkfish are collected, stocked, fed, and maintained until they reach sexual maturity. After that, the milkfish are brent and transferred to hatchery. Hatchery operations have a low survival rate of 30%, where larvae with 2 to 3 centimeters of size are kept until they are ready to transport in nurseries. Nursery operation in Philippines is integrated with growth facilities and in 4 to 6 weeks, fry grows from 5 to 8 centimeter juveniles, which are released into growth cages, pens, and pans where harvesting is done. Next is for technological development. There is an advancement in the technological development of milkfish production, and some of it includes the following shown in this slide. Next. Now for the processing sector, milkfish as one of the most consumed fish in the Philippines has made its productivity boost by the variety in the product lines of milkfish not to mention the demanding markets in the local and international markets by small-scale family enterprises and large-scale corporations through import and export. They are categorized into the traditional, modern, and value-added. For the traditional, milk fish is either in the form of smoked and fermented from what is either in glass jars or bottled bangus in corn oil or tin cans that are tightly sealed and processed at recomm recommended time and pressure applied. For the value add added, this refers to the other processed form, which means that milkfish is transformed into the new varied and higher quality delicacies like fish balls, kikyong, milkfish nuggets, and many more developments with this commodity as raw material. And to mention one is the pulveron, which comes from the bones or spines of the milk fish. And we have next the manufacturing companies and scale operation for milk fish, such as the Cabezotis Trading, First Cutch Enterprises, Kowong International Freight Corporation, Princess Joy Freight Trading, PSK Logistics, Saint Trade Corporation and Tiger Marine Product. For the marketing sector, in the Philippines, marketing channels are characterized by a fairly decent chain of operations. While most of the production of milkfish is produced from the breakage water and aquaculture input systems. A small portion is also from the fish plants or nurseries found in our country. Another form of this is also utilized by using fish cages and fish pens, which is mostly utilized by urban communities that are residing within the vicinity of the seas or oceans. Now for the rankings of the different regions that produce the most of milkfish in the country, we have the uh, ARMM, Region 9, Region 4B, and lastly, for the Lleva administrative region. Next slide, please. Targeting channels for the commodity of milkfish vary slightly depending on the province that the commodity is marked or processed from. While it is true that most of the milkfish in farming comes from the urban regions, especially in statements that are within 
within the vicinity of bodies of water, one of the major producers of milkfish in the Philippines is from the first region, the province of Pangasinan. With careful consideration of the data present, presented in the table that is received from the Bureau of Aquaculture and Fisheries, Region 1 contributed a substantial amount in terms of milkfish production from the year 2018. Down here, a diagram can be found wherein it illustrates the marketing channels that the Pangasinan has within. Next slide, please. Now, as for the volume absorbed by each channel, 80% of the total produce from the of the milkfish within the country is then uh, circulated within its local markets and it is provided all throughout the country. Now, as for the remaining 20%, they are then the top qualities of the uh, produce, which is then sent to international international market. Next slide. Now then, the marketing strategy, strategy adopted by producers and traders now for the pricing. The, uh, throughout the years, the retail price of milk fish has been gradually going up to a considerable, considerable number of reasons in the market of fisheries and aquaculture. According to a recent and ongoing statistical survey from Statista, the domestic retail prices of milk fish have been steadily increasing throughout the years, with the biggest jump of 133.12 pesos in the year of 2017 into 156.18 pesos in the succeeding year, 2018. Below is a graph that high, and then, and then the domestic retail price of the Philippines from 2007 up until 2018 shows that it has been steadily increasing. Now, as for the promotion of the said commodity, milk fish or locally coined as bongos is considered as a national fish of the Philippines with this, it is no surprise that it serves as a staple in the Filipino palate since people of all ages are able to, cook, to uh, consume and cook it into different dishes and variations. The milkfish is also a staple in Southeast Asian cuisines such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and also Taiwan. Next slide, please. For the price trend, the figure shows the retail price of the milkfish in the Philippines from 2010 up to 2018. It is observed that there is a great increase in the price from 2017 to 2018. This is for the reason that there is a great decrease in the volume of production from 2017 to 2018, leading the price increase. For the supply situation, the figure shows the daily per capita net for disposable of milkfish in the Philippines from 2012 up to 2017 which refers to the remaining balance of the commodity after consumption. It is seen that there is an increasing trend from 2015 to 2017, showing that the milkfish supply is increases. For the export, only a fraction is imported from the production, and through the years, the volume has been relatively decreased from more than 4,000 metric tons to only 3,000 in 2016. Despite the decrease, Philippines is still one of the top exporters of milkfish around the world. Next, for import, the volume of produced fry by the milkfish bird stock continues to lag behind its demand of 2.5 to 3 billion pieces a year, since Philippines can only produce 900 million a year. This causes imports as high as 70% from Indonesia to meet the country's requirement. Next. The port sector. These are the major institutions that support the milkfish industry. The first one is the Southeast Asian Fishes Development Center Aquaculture Department, or also known as FIFTEC, AQB. The second is the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. And lastly, the University of the Philippines, Visayas. These three are responsible in research development of milkfish in order to strengthen and expand the commodity industry. These are the development programs and projects intended in milkfish industry. 
First one is the development and application of symbiotic enriched fish feeds, which this aims to test the effects of feeds in the health, immune status, and performance of milk fish. Next is the improvement of microalgae paste production for aquaculture. This aims to test also if it's feasible and viable to use microalgae paste as larval feed in milkfish hatcheries. Third is the National Aquafeeds R&D program. Here includes the field trial of protein and rich copra meal as feed protein. And lastly is the development and promotion of milkfish satellite hatcheries in major milkfish products producing areas of the Philippines. For the investment strategies, it is to maximize the production area where establishment of additional central hatteries is recommended as well as providing loans for farmers. Another is the elimination of marketing layers, which can be achieved by disseminating information, government inspections, organizing cooperatives, and providing credit facilities. Next. Now government can look forward into the following area of concern, such as post-harvest facilities in which the government can partner with the private sectors to create additional valuable products. Second, we have the research and development, which will provide a sufficient fund to further improve the supply and achieve sustainability. And sustainable mapping of location for sites for tracking of physical sites for mass high quality. Here in the industry analysis, we focus on the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats in milkfish industry per sector. The strengths include that it can source tools, equipment, fry, and feeds. Production techniques and practices are already available. It has optimal condition to spot and breed milkfish. There is a high demand. Preserving methods are available. The export market is stable. Support from government and private institutions are present. And lastly, different studies and researches on milkfish are available. Next. Now as for the weaknesses of the said commodity, it is highly dependent on high costs, price inputs due to the lack of technical and financial assistance from the uh, subsidence and support from the government and agencies that sh should be providing the due, due, con the due, uh, the due help for this commodity. It also has limited processing plants and poor market facilities. It has mostly raw firms available in the market it lacks data on milkfish and it lacks programs and developments for the projects in the uh, milkfish for this commodity in this, uh, this type of market. Next slide, please. And these are the opportunities that we foresee in the milkfish industry. The first one is the access to feeds and price. Next is the support from research institutions. Then. There is also room for improvement in milkfish production. Also, the possibility of constructing plantations. And aside from that, the variation of milkfish dishes. And lastly, the coordination from different groups or institutions for future projects and programs. The following are the potential danger that pose trends to the milkfish industry. We have unreliable brood stock, downward trend on algae and phytoplankton as feeds, the natural calamities, and the fluctuations in the production. After the uh, after identifying the SWOT analysis, now they are, these are what we conclude. Philippines, our country is market driven, which means that the Philippines is ruled by the market trends and customer needs, which only means that 
it is customer focused with the awareness of competitors and understanding of the market rather than the ability of the production or processing itself. Also, the milkfish is the top species valued in the Philippines as it makes up the 36.4% of the total production of the aquatic species. Being second in the global export, uh, in the global pro producer in the, uh, globally, the uh, Philippines has the potential to be a great exporter and may also be a uh, opportunity for the country to be able to capitalize on the uh, market, in the international market, specifically for the commodity of milkfish. The downside in milkfish industry is that Philippines is heavily dependent on fry imports. The country on its own cannot produce enough to meet the demand of fry, thus needing more imports from Indonesia. Next. This is the recommended commodity system analysis framework with the interventions of different institutions, public and private per sector, which are the following. First, the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center, or also known as CIVBEC, Department of Science and Technology, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, University of the Philippines, Visayas, Department of Agriculture, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Public Works and Highways, Philippine Statistic Authorities, Department of Information and Communications Technology, Board of Investments, local government units, and other private companies. We recommend to improve the feeds from different sectors. For production, it is recommended to help small farm owners by providing technical and financial assistance. Another is to optimize the available fry technology since there is a low survival rate. For processing sector, constructing plantations and integration of modern technology is recommended. Lacking in data is one of the main problems of the marketing sector. To solve this problem, we recommend gathering, compiling, disseminating of data with the help of different sectors and also improvement of logistics with the help of modern technology. In the support service, sector, the small-scale farm is at this disadvantage. So we recommend that the different institutions assist them and maximize their potential. Aside from that is to launch cooperatives that will help and assist each other in any means possible. Now for the specific recommendations for the commodity, we have prepared a series uh, a series of technology that could be utilized by our country and also for the countries that plan to uh, invest for the commodity of milkfish. Now, first up, we have the automated and customized feeding systems for fish farms and nurseries. Now, for this specific technology, machine and automation, it is mostly applied and utilized by fish farms and nurseries that have operations that are considered to be of medium or large in size. It provides precise and accurate feeding times along with a specific size of pellets for the fish that is currently in the nursery. The pellet size and amount may be micromanaged in order to accommodate the specific needs and requirements of the fish that is being fostered within the system. Next up is this temperature regulating system. This specific technology is, apl is applicable to countries that are geographically located in the regions of the world wherein the climate is borderline inhabitable for tropic and subtropic fishes, especially the milkfish. The climate for the, uh, climate for the region could either be too cold or too hot for the fish to survive and even to proliferate. For the milkfish, the temperature range that is considered habitable and preferred would be within the range of 18 up until 30 degrees Celsius. Now, lastly, we'll have the uh, sonar and acoustic telemetry system. This advanced technology provides accurate and real-time view of the fish within the fish cage, tanks, or pens wherein they are, called, they are cared for. With the use of sonal, 
toner technology and telemetry system along with the submersible cameras that are set up within the entirety of the cage, the fishes are able to be observed if they are receiving enough nutrition and they may be carefully monitored and selected if otherwise. This technology also provides the accurate data or statistics there is for the fish that is pre present within their specific cage or tank. It also makes hold of the technique wherein each individual fish is grabbed and examined. With this, we would like to conclude our presentation and we would like to thank the viewers for listening and we do hope that you have learned from our presentation. That is all and we hope that you are well.